Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're playing Mildly Spicy German Whispers. Um, now, a couple of things about both the title and today's puzzle. So, I think a lot of European food, uh, including German food, is kind of famously not spicy. So, I really sort of struggled to come up with something that would fit the title of something that's mildly spicy and German. And then I remembered a conversation I once had with a German friend uh, where it wasn't just him. There was a group of them. It was like five or six of them. And I think without exception, all of them thought that doner kebabs were a German food. And I really tried to explain that, no, it's Turkish immigrants brought Turkish doner kebab to Germany. And it was sort of essentially... I guess, absorbed into the culture and became um, like common street food in Germany. Oh, obviously, not just Germany, UK as well, and like many other countries around the world. But um, that was really, <laughs> it's, it's a massive stretch because I'm kind of restating their incorrect assumption that um, doner kebabs are a German food. But that was really the only mildly spicy thing that I can come up with, with Sleuth here enjoying it as he strolls down a nameless German street there in the background. Now, about the puzzle itself. So it's another six by six puzzle. And um, one of the things that concerns me is these six by six puzzles tend to last less than 10 minutes. So I'm trying again to find that right difficulty level. But, you know, when you have a, a, a puzzle that is, yes, it is one star rated. There aren't many of them. I think the constructors feel like they're out to get us with only like really two stars and three stars. There's more puzzles that are three stars and above than there are one or two. Um, but regardless, it's 93, 94% rated at the time of recording. So, I mean, I'm excited to see what it is. Hopefully it won't be under 10 minutes and it will be indeed mildly spicy. Let's take a look at today's puzzle. So, mildly spicy German whispers by Simple Purple Frog. What a cool name. Normal... In brackets, irregular Sudoku rules apply. So that means place the digits one to five. Oh, it's not even six by six, it's five by five. Once each in every row, in every column, and in every region. And you can see that the regions look fairly different for each of, I'm guessing, five regions. Yeah. So um, obviously the region outlines are defined by these thicker black lines. Then we have modified German whispers line. I mean, it's got to have to be modified because if it has to be oscillating between 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, 7, 8, 9, it's really going to struggle to find anything from 6, 7, 8, 9 in here. So adjacent digits along a green line must differ by three or more. So if I go with my favorite digit here, 2, then this would have to be 5. It would have to be exactly 5 because that's the only digit that is three or more away. And this would have to be 1 or 2, both of which are allowed because, you know, it's in a different region, different row different column as well. So that would be a valid set of pencil marks for this particular German whisper line. And then we have a second one in here. And remember, they need to three, be three or more apart. We have an inequality. So the greater than sign, that kind of right angle, I was going to say right angle triangle. That's not, that's not an incorrect statement, that's for sure. But anyway, here is that greater sign indicates which digit is greater than the other. So whatever this value is, let's say it's, I'm going to go with letters A, then B here has to be smaller than A. Right, we don't really have a huge amount of information to go on here. I think the irregularity is really where it's going to be all about. And uh, if you don't mind enjoying a donor kebab or mildly spicy food in general, whether you are in Germany or otherwise, link will be in the description down below for you to play along as usual. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. So really doubling down on that statement, there isn't a lot for us to go on. I'm kind of tempted to go down the letter route. A, B, C, D, and E. You can see now with this irregular shape, which is why it's always so helpful, that this letter here has to be there to make sure that the column is complete. This D here, we need it in this region, and it sees all of these four cells. That's a D. One of these is a D, not an E. Just, again, same kind of logic applying. 
E, you can see in this almost Tetris-like block here, that has to be the E because there's nowhere else that this E doesn't see. Eliminates all of these. We can probably finish E's. So we've done here. We've done there. We've done all of these. So in this shape, again, Sudoku means that this is E. And finally, this is the last E in the, in the grid, in this 5x5 five five grid. So that's E as well. These you can see are from A and B, just to complete the row. This item now stands out. We've got A, B, and E. I need C and D to complete it. That gives me another A, B. Um, there is a B you can see in here, so we can push, possibly sort of push the Sudoku a bit further, forcing this to be an A, forcing this to be a B. Got sort of Bs in here. In fact, where is B? You can see there has to be a B in this shape, and it can't be this cell because the Bs line up in the columns. So obviously if this is a B, this will be a B, and it's an X-wing. And essentially this can never be a B, this can never be a B. Um, so that is B. Just completing this now, we need A and C. We need A and C. Don't know how much further I can push this without really thinking about the German whispers for a moment. So in here to complete this shape, I think what, well, forget that. Here is to complete this row, it is C and D. And essentially we've got the same thing in here. It's C, D, but one of them has to be a B. And I don't know what this is. Right, let's have a think about the German whisper lines for a second. And, um, like, what I think, essentially, we have something very similar to standard German whispers with the five. In that, on a normal German whisper line, if you put a five on it, something to be five or more away on it would be impossible because it would either be zero or ten, neither of which are allowed on a normal Sudoku of one to ten. Sorry, one to nine. Now, I think we have something very similar in here in that in one to five and three or more away, I don't think we can ever fit a three on here. And the reason I'm thinking that is for three to be three or more away is either zero or six and clearly not part of the digits one to five. So we can never have a three on these modified German whispers. What we can also do is color them. So I don't know which one is high or low, but you can see this E, if I give it a polarity color of orange, these are going to have to be purple, this would have to be purple, this would have to be orange. Which immediately tells me that has to be A, because it's a different color than this B. So that's A, that's B, therefore that's B. Uh, this is C or D. I don't know which is it yet. But I do have CDs lining up. That's A, that's C, that's A, and this is C or D. So what we need to figure out, oh, there you go. Um, it can't be D, because I said you need to have the digit three essentially unavailable anywhere on here. Sorry, anywhere on the German whisper lines. And if you look at the German whisper lines, we've got A, B, C, and E. The only letter that's missing from this German whisper line is D. And if I put a D in here, I've broken it. So there has to be a letter that's not on the German whisper line. It is D, which will essentially become, in a moment, our three. So let's start filling in some numbers. That's got to be three. You can see these are one and five. I don't know the order just yet. I know that they're one and five. Reason I know that is, essentially, whatever this digit is, it sees two different numbers next to it. So imagine that for a second that this is a four. The only digit that is three or more away from it would be one. And both of these would have to be the same letter and they're not. And the same logic applies in here, is that um, if this was the four, or let's go with the two, the only digit that would be five or more away would be five, and they would have to be both the same letter, and they're not. So E and C are essentially one and five. 
B and A are 2 and 4, and B is the bigger digit. So that's 4, that's 2, that gives us now, this has to be the 1, to be 3 or more away. This therefore has to be the 5, and that is a solution to today's puzzle. It is indeed under 6 minutes. That was very quick. Um, not entirely certain, I may end up posting another, I'm not sure. But I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll let it be, and then maybe I'll start using my own solve time as a reference. If things take me under 10 minutes, maybe I do need to be posting a second puzzle on the same day, just to give you guys a bit more of a challenge. But what a lovely puzzle, Simple Purple Frog. It's got tons of interactions between the irregulars that allowed you to sort of pretty much complete most of the grid. The German whisper to give you that first break in with the threes. And then the greater sign to kind of help give you polarity and direction on these German whisper lines and allows you to complete it. So it's a lovely puzzle for sure. And certainly deserving of the 94% rating. Hope you guys enjoyed the puzzle and the video. Well, it's a very short one. And see you back for the next one. Bye-bye for now.